All right, it's a nice quiet Sunday morning and I wanted to make a video about the rational roots theorem or the rational zeros theorem. Sometimes I've, I've seen this in a um, class where you learn about factoring numbers. I know some of you mentioned in your reflections that this was something you learned in abstract algebra. It's not super important for this class because uh, we're mostly moving towards the real numbers and so we're just going to stop very briefly with the rational numbers. Um, I want to make a video kind of talking through the proof just because I would rather use class time uh, to go over our inductions and, and some other proofs about rational numbers that we'll be doing. So roughly what it says is if we have an equation, so that's some equation like this, um, I've got some examples down here, right? Something like 3x to the fourth plus x squared plus 2 is 0, or further down, x squared minus 5. What's important is that all of these coefficients are integers. And the uh, leading coefficient, of course, has to be non-zero. That's the sort of first term that you have. And also that last coefficient um, is, is non-zero. And then the claim of the theorem, let's read it together, says let r equal c over d. So in other words, if we have a fraction of integers and they have no common factors, then the numerator of that um, solution uh, has to divide c0 and d divides cn. Right? So again, if we have a rational number r that satisfies this polynomial equation, then the numerator of that in lowest terms has to divide, um, let me circle it here, the numerator c has to divide c0, so that's this constant term here, and the denominator d has to divide cn, which is that leading term here. Right? And so just quickly, if we go through with these examples, well, what are the possible numerators? Well, the numerators have to divide this uh, constant term 2. So those are going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. The denominators are going to be, well, they have to divide 3. So they're going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. And so then the possible rational roots are going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. That's where we chose denominator 1. And then plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 2 thirds. So if our goal were to see if this polynomial had any rational roots, we would check all eight of these roots. We'd plug them in. We could do that by hand or with a calculator. And if any of them worked, then we would know, I guess, that that was a rational root. And if none of them worked, then that would mean that there can't be any rational solutions to this equation because the rational root theorem says that the only solutions are going to be of this form. So I don't, I'm not going to check all eight here because that would, I would be kind of, kind of a little annoying. I did check it on a computer. It turns out none of those are solutions. But down here... Um, if we do the same sort of test, we can check that the only possible rational roots for x squared minus 5 equals 0 are going to be plus or minus 5 and plus or minus 1. And again, we did that the same way because the denominators have to divide 1, so they have to be plus or minus 1. The numerators have to also be plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 5. Right? And it's really easy to, to plug these in, right? Whether we plug in plus or minus 5 or plus or minus 1, we're never going to get a solution to this equation. So these are uh, no rational solutions. And so what this means is that there is no rational solution to x squared equals 5. So i.e. Um, 5 has no square root in the rational numbers. Okay. So using the rational zeros theorem, we are able to prove that there is not a square root of 5 in, inside the rational number. So that's, that's kind of the application. Uh, in class, we're going to do, do a different, different proof of, of um, that will prove that 2 is square root of 2 is irrational, and we'll do that in a slightly different way. So 
Um, let's just talk a little bit about the proof. Um, you would have read it in the book. Again, it's not, not super important, but I just want to show you some things that, that are important for this class, sort of when we go to read a proof. Um, main point of the proof is to look for the, the, the sort of conclusion of the proof. Right, so that the main assumption, well, okay, we have some integers, c0 through cn. We have a rational number r. Uh, it's not just any rational number. It's one that satisfies this equation. Right? And we're assuming that r is a fraction of the form c over d. Right? And then what do we want to show? Well, we want to show then c divides c0 and d divides cn. Right? And so our assumption, you know, we're going to start with assuming that this fraction c over d is a solution. Let's assume it's in lowest terms, because that's what the, the problem says when they say that c and d are integers having no common factors. And then what we want to show at the end of the day is, is down here. We want to show that c divides c0 and d divides cn. Right? So let me, just, um, let me just encircle this and just copy it because um, we're going we're gonna to need that probably later on in the proof. Right? And so let's just sort of see what we have. We know where we're going. We can maybe even put that um, down here if we want, if we go to the, to the, to the, to the next page. So we know that uh, c over d is a solution. So that means that if we plug it in, Um, to this equation, plus dot 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 plus c1 times c over d plus c0, that means that we're going to get 0. Right? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear denominators. Right? I'm going to notice that my denominator of my first term is d to the n. My denominator of my next term is d to the n minus 1. Denominator here is going to be d. And so if I clear denominators, I'm going to multiply by d to the n. And what I'm going to get is I'm going to get c n c to the n plus dot dot dot. Here I'm going to clear denominators. I'm going to get one factor of d. In the next term, I'd get two factors of d. Um, it's a really good proof to try and write down yourself. Um, on your own, maybe you could pause the video and try to write down this, this step um, on your own. So you've got d to the n minus 1 there, and then d to the n here. And then the basic idea of the proof now is, um, I'm going to do it in a little bit differently than, than the, the one in the book does, so that you have a couple different ways to look at it, is what I would look here, and I would say that these terms are all divisible by d. So if I look at that and I say, well, all of those terms are divisible by d. And so let's kind of solve that. So let's get c. Um, let's put a minus sign over here. Um, is going to equal all of those terms. So if I copy this and I paste it down here, Right, we should believe that, let me get rid of that, equals 0. Right? But um, we have this equality here. Right? Now, if I look at this, all of these terms on the right are divisible by d. They've all got a factor of d in them. And if we look over here, well, can c to the n have any factors in common with d? Well, let's see. c and d were the numerator and denominator of our fraction, and they had no factors in common. So C and D don't have any, any prime factors in common. So I think that means that C and N can't have any factors in common with D. So I think that must mean that the left-hand side, since everything on the right is divisible by D, then the only possibility left is that this term here, cn, has to be divisible by d. 
right? And so, therefore, Cn is divisible by D. And if we go down and, and sort of look at our conclusion, holy cow, we've already just checked that second statement there, right? So we're, we're really half the way there. And if we wanna complete the proof, let me just copy this uh, equation one more time. I think I've got it here actually. So um, it's returning to our equation, what was it, C n, C to the n plus dot dot dot. If at the same time I look at the first uh, terms of it, I see that these are all divisible by C. Right? This one has a C to the n, this has a C to the n minus 1, uh, this term has a C in it. And so similarly, um, we are going to be able to conclude that um, if we were to rewrite that, um, let's see, the same way, c n c to the n plus blah blah blah, now it's going to be equals minus um, c to the n. Similarly, we're going to be able to look at that and we're going to conclude since the letter c divides everything on the left, it's going to have to divide uh, this coefficient c0. So therefore, uh, c0 is divisible by c. And we look down. Luckily, we wrote down what we wanted to show at the beginning of our proof. And we're done.